How was your Christmas, New Year's, everything good? Everyone happy to be back? Yeah? First meetup of uh, 2017. Thank you all for coming this evening. Uh, much appreciated. Hope you enjoyed the evening. It's meetup number 58, uh, brought to you by Polar7 and all around the Amazon Web Services. So, thank you. The, we've changed the format slightly, so we've got we changed the format in that we've got sponsors finally after a few years. So, thank you all to all our sponsors tonight. So, from our sponsors list, we've got Westcon, I'm sorry, John, you're here somewhere. Show us a hand. Oh, sorry, oh, he's drinking over there in the corner. So, there you go. We've got Cloud Health here, Elise is here, knocking around somewhere. Please stand back right there, say hey. Uh, Brocator here, sorry, who are speaking with us tonight. So, we've got uh, Chris and Ian, Ian and Hi, Monica. Monica. These guys are all here this evening. And then in the coming months, we'll have sofas, humbled, a cloud guru, chef, fresh desk, and Telstra as well. So, thanks to all our sponsors for this year. So, 2017, they're our sponsors for the year, which is great. So, thank you all. So, the structure for tonight is the uh, same as before. We're going to start off with some just introductions, which is just me getting a chance to talk and say hello. Then we have a lightning talk from David Williams, who's just going to, who works with us at Polar 7. He's just going to give you some AWS updates and news and a bit of back and forth around some of those things. As you know, AWS releases services quite fast and furious, so we need to keep up with them. Yeah. Then we've got a speaker, we've got Chris from uh, Brocade, who's going to speak about automation and serverless architecture with Brocade. Then we're going to break for some networking, pizzas and beers. And then we're going to go into Matt Ray from Chef. Matt, where are you? There he is over there. So Matt's going to give us a talk tonight as well. And then uh, some more networking. So, Any questions before we start? Everyone happy to be here? Pumped? Looking forward to it? Yeah. yeah. Woohoo! Good stuff. All right, cool. So we're going to go with some updates from David. Hope you like. Thanks, Daryl. Is I just uh, got my sysops to the Keep it close to your and uh, up close. I used the uh, cloud guru as part of my uh, preparation, so I can recommend that. Um, yeah. Okay, we've got a new section which is going to be on new and used as a web services. So they're going to be for five minutes. So if you want to ask any questions, come see me or any of the other guys just on after the, uh, the chat. Um, also, uh, I'd also recommend uh, if you think you find it interesting, have a look at the Jeff Barr blog. That's two Fs, two Rs. Uh, he's an AWS evangelist. He's a really good introduction to the things I'm talking about. So, I'm going to be talking about uh, EFS, Lambda, reserved instances, a little bit on DDoS, and the A word. Um, so, let's start with uh, EFS, and no, it's not here yet, uh, but it is changing. Um, I first used it about uh, two months ago. Uh, <coughs> since then, there's a few things that have happened. The, uh, the mount point has changed. You used to put the AZ, you used to put the AZ into the, um, the mount point. We don't have to do that anymore. And you can use, um, if you have an on site connected to Amazon Direct Connect, you can mount the EFS onto a computer or your uh, work environment. Um, Lambda has, uh, there's a few things that happen with Lambda. The things I find interesting is the uh, environment variables before you used to have to put a whole package up to Lambda if you wanted to change the settings and now you can put those settings into environment variables and leave your package on Lambda. And you can do that in the, in the console. It's just a, a key value pair, so you have it in the console or cloud animation script, or you can use the command line interface. And uh, you can there's a create function to use it for that, or you can just use an update function configuration and just update the environment. Uh, how, many, how many here are using Lambda? Quite a few. Yeah, yeah. finding it good? Yeah, cool. Uh, also, if you are using command line interface, don't forget to update, otherwise it won't work. Uh, the, the current version is 1. Point, when, I, when I looked this a few days ago, it was 1.11.40. It's now brought up to 1.11.44. So it's moving all the time. Um, Reserved instances. They've been around since 2009, and as you know, it's a billing construct. 
Uh, the standard one is Citroen AZ, and as soon as you either fire up a, a new instance, or you have an instance already running, then that filling construct is applied to your instance. Uh, Amazon changed this now, um, because you had very little latitude. You could change the uh, instance size within a family, and that was about it. Now what you can do is you can make it regional, which means that you don't have to put it into an AZ. Uh, if you make it regional, then you're not guaranteed to get an instance. Whereas if you're in an AZ, you are. Uh, also, they have now there's two other um, new services within the reserve instances. There's scheduling and there's convertible. Scheduling means that you can uh, order, so you can schedule uh, a block of time, um, and you have to guarantee that you're going to use that at least 1,200 hours, and then you can use that computing resource, like say, like a batch processing. And convertible is that we actually you can change everything within that. Uh, uh, but you can't change down. You always have to change up the same billing amount or a little bit more. But again, you look at the Jeff Bar blogs, you'll see a lot more detail on this. Uh, DDoS, as well as a lot of things came out uh, around December uh, when the reinvent was happening. Uh, there's the um, Shield and also WAF, which you can apply to uh, uh, application load balancer. Before that had to be against cloud. And uh, DDoS has been used quite a lot for the, uh, the ABS um, well, catastrophe. Although there's varied opinions on whether it was really a DDoS attack that brought them down, it wasn't just really bad program management. But I won't go into that. Um, you got to look for a job there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, as well, with uh, the DDoS attacks, is that they, what they were relying on is um, internet compliance, um, like you know, fake logs and webcams and things like that. And uh, what's happening? Yeah, sorry, what's happening is that uh, the in the US anyway, the Federal Trade Commission is suing D-Link because they didn't take reasonable measures to device by putting um, passwords into firmware and change them. And uh, maybe that might have some effect. And last but not least, um, first of all, I'll just ask uh, Alexa, are you here? No, I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> That's far enough away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is a story about um, a family in, in Texas who had an Amazon Echo. Uh, this was two weeks after Christmas, and they also had a daughter. And we suspect she didn't get what she wanted. So when the parents were out of the room, she spoke to her and ordered herself a doll's house and also a big box of cookie. And when that arrived, the parents worked out what it was on. And that was a key. But what happened was that you've got this device that takes voice commands, as you say, Alexa first, and you have a television set in your lounge room, which transmits voice. And what happened is this became a news item. The television announcer was going on about this cheap six-year-old girl. All she had to say was, Alexa, buy me a doll's house. Mass order of a doll's house. Anyone who had a Amazon Alexa. So the, 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 um, the moral of that story is be very careful what you wish for, especially what Alexa beforehand. Now, you can configure these devices to not do that. You can turn off your own ordering and you can actually put a pin in it. So uh, I think that's about my five minutes, is it? Yep, excellent. Thank you very much, David. I hope very so. good. Thank <laughs> you, sorry. <laughs> One more <question. laughs> so next up we have Chris, who's going to uh, take over the mic. And I'm just going to swap, swap over again. Test two, three, test three. Okay, fantastic. So as we uh, swap all this over, my name is Chris. Uh, I work for uh, Brocade, uh, also known as Factory Networks. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Eve and I were having a little discussion about this earlier. Um, we do a lot of uh, software uh, development in terms of networks, in terms of open daylight. Anyone ever heard of open daylight? In terms of SDN controllers and that kind of stuff. So I'm actually deeply involved um, with the current um, Telstra build out right now. Telstra is building a national SDN network. This is all based on OpenFlow, and this guy, like, this guy's not. Uh, they just announced that actually just about last month. So we're actually helping the big T 
develop the next generation of software-defined networking. Uh, this is getting away from the traditional IPMPLS networks. I'm actually trained as an IPMPLS engineer, if you guys know kind of what that is. There's well, probably a lot of programmers in the room, but for the network guys, yeah, there we go, yeah, yeah, okay, you get, you get it, right? So it's a whole new paradigm of what we're actually learning, uh, and a lot of the traditional network engineers are now learning the whole DevOps, NetOps, you know, this is what Google and Facebook have been doing now for years. And Amazon actually does this in the background. You don't see any of this happening inside AWS, but it's all open flow, open flow switches. They got wrote, wrote, wrote their own code. It's not you know, your standard Cisco, Juniper, you know, Brocade kind of switches behind there. So, anyways, um, this is an example of one of the VNFs that we offer. This is a virtualized network function. So, in, of course, in the olden days, you had a big piece of tin that did something, and now obviously everything's virtualized. Nobody buys. Nobody buys tin. Ian's laughing at me because he still does Tim. <laughs> I actually have my heckling group over here. They're, they're here to uh, make sure I, I keep it all straight. So what we've done in this VNF, um, a lot of you obviously are coders, web developers, this kind of stuff. You have your general set of tools and you don't, how should I say this? It's really hard to learn somebody else's new tool, right? The last thing you want to do when you get a whole new virtualized network function or you get some new piece of code is, oh, now I gotta learn something else. And now I gotta learn how to code this. And now I gotta learn how to code that. So what we've done here is we're gonna make this really, really easy for you. We're gonna give you a cloud formation template. And we're gonna do everything for you to get you up and running on this VNF rather than doing it all yourself. Anyway, sorry, um, do, do I just go? Yeah, okay, just so I've already quarantined with three minutes here. We've lost focus. Okay, uh, the other thing I obviously want to talk about, we have a drone. This is a wonderful thing that you can fly. We've given this away at numerous events, and you'll notice that all of you on your seats have a little bit of, uh, uh, what is that stuff called, papyrus, paper? What do we call that? No. <laughs> Non-electronic forms of recording information. And if you just grab yourself some pen, I got some pens up here, put it in, put it in that box here, and at the end of the night, end of the night, I believe, yeah, yes. we're going to have a draw to win that drone that sits right there. Uh, we also have a consolation prize, which we'll talk about later. Yeah, so really quickly, I'm just going to whip through this. Uh, what is the Brocade V80C? Because you probably know what a load balancer is. <laughs> I already, have any, I already have a load balancer. Why do I need this one? I'm going to talk a little bit about the cloud formation template we've developed for you guys with some puppet automation. And then we'll do a little talk about some traffic script, little things you can do to get you out of a bind. So a little introduction. High level view of our traffic manager. This is basically a, it's a load balancer on steroids. What happened was uh, Gartner, you know, the Gartner guys with their magic quadrants, they decided to make a whole new category called VADC, which is Virtualized Application Delivery Controller. It's like a load balancer squared, so to speak. So this is this sits in front of obviously all your, you know, your web servers. It can interpret things and load balance and you know do a whole bunch of things. This is like ELB. There's also ALB now, obviously. So obviously we get requests in. But obviously, we can also stop bad requests coming through. There's AWS VUAF, we can do VUAF as well, et cetera, et cetera. So these are all very standardized features. If you look under the hood, we have monitors talking to your pools. We have a whole bunch of rules like SSL offload, service protection, HTTP2, we can do HTTP2 acceleration. Um, ELB can do that now as well. That was just a, that's a new thing in the AWS. We take the request, we send it to our load balancers, encryption, multiplexing. We also can do caching and stuff on the way out and out it goes. So this is a very deep level. You guys are very technical. This is great. This shows you very under the hood what the pieces are and how they're operating with each other. And you say, that's great, Chris, but I already have a load balancer. Why are you talking to me about this? So the way that we say it is our VADC is in addition to. So there's certain things that the ELBs or ELBs can do, and there's certain things they cannot do. And this is, how should I say this? When you're developing something, or you're a network engineer, you need to know what tools there are in the market that can help you. 
right? Somebody comes to you and says, I need this. And it's something left field, it's something way out in a corner case. And you go, well, that doesn't fit in any of the molds. So you need to make sure you know what tools are out there in AWS Marketplace or things you can use that gets you out of these binds because you probably all have customers who ask for very weird things and don't quite understand how technology works, but that's okay. All the time. <laughs> oh, no, no, that never happens, exactly. So this is here to make sure that you can satisfy your customers' requests within AWS to get you out of binds and make them do what they want you to do. All right, do you want to try it? Yeah. So once again, the biggest problem that I think a lot of us have always had is, okay, how many people know Python? Great, fantastic. How many people know Perl? Okay, PHP, and then some Visual Basic, and then some C++, and it's like, oh my God, how many languages do I need to code in? Oh, by the way, we have our own language. Oh, great. Great. Yet another thing I gotta learn just to get this thing working. So guess what? We built a beautiful cloud formation template. It's a pre-canned template for you to try. What do we do? We set up dual load balancers in multiple AZs, and we cluster them, so you don't have to go in and do any of that nonsense. We set up management IPs. We do dual public elastic IPs for you. We automate the configuration via a puppet script. So this is all off the shelf stuff. We auto-scale the Apache web servers that are sitting behind it for you. And we also do GitHub integration as well. So you can pull configs from GitHub or wherever you'd like to pull them from. It's just, it's plain text readable stuff. And we give you full examples on how to use this. There is a walkthrough. This will be sent out to you guys in your email. There's a wonderful um, multi-page set up, full manual, tells you exactly what we're gonna do, exactly how it works, line by line. And it's all literally pre-canned for you. You don't have really have to do anything. Like you can literally say deploy and it'll come up. It does take about 13 minutes to come up for everything to come up pr properly. I was advised not to run a live demo <laughs> because I go way over time. A little bit of detail about what it's going to do for you. We're going to set up two VADCs, obviously in two different AZs. You can set it up in three because AWS Sydney now supports three AZs, right? They got you know, SY1, SY2, SY3 um, over in Equinix. It will set up all your traffic IPs, it'll set up management IPs, it'll set up your IAM rules for you, so you don't have to guess like, oh, what am I gonna do, is this gonna be, you know? Or do the blanket, you know, just let everyone talk to everyone. So you can use the micro segmentation that's, that exists within AWS to make sure your security's all there. That's on the public subnets. We then have a private subnet sitting behind it, which we have your auto-scale web server group. This is just your standard Apache web servers. You can spin up as you need. And obviously we have another machine that's just running Puppet. It pushes the config and also does our web server tool uh, script management. We also have, and Dimitri was working on this guy who did this. He's also working on an auto-scale group for our VADC. So as you need more load balancers, we'll spin that up for you. That'll be out in the next version of our CFD. Pretty cool. Y'all gonna go home and try this? <laughs> Everyone says yes, you want the drone? Okay, here. Uh, <laughs> anyways, again, barrier to entry. I, I, I don't really like learning yet another way of doing something. So if we can make this really easy, uh, and I, as you can tell, I have a funny accent. I'm actually from Melbourne. We all talk, we all talk like this down there. Yeah. Um, in North America, I'm actually Canadian, by the way. Uh, I moved here because the weather's a way better. Uh, the, um, we have something called Staples Business Depot, and their whole commercial is all about the easy button. There's a big red button that says easy. <laughs> this is the easy button for you guys. You hit it, up it comes. I'm going to talk a little bit about why you would also want to use something like RBADC. We have something called Traffic Script. This is a full interactive scripting system that can look at anything in the request, anything in the response, and rewrite anything, or change things, or change pools, or basically interact. This is, this is not just stupid load balancing. This is based on what the request is, or what the user agent is, we can do all sorts of stuff. Anyone ever run to something called Microsoft Windows XP? Yeah, it's the thing that doesn't die. <laughs> it's, 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 it just keeps giving, I know. Uh, <laughs> 
So SNI, it doesn't do SNI very well. So if you have a, a SSL certificate certs, it doesn't understand the list, right? So you, what we can do is we can actually intercept that and redirect it to one that actually has the right SSL cert for it because the thing is just completely useless. It's still out there, by the way. So what we break down into, and I'll just do a quick build slide here. I know it's kind of annoying. We have the client does what's called a request rule. We run some logic. We run a response rule based on that. And we write it back to the client. We can always retry and do all sorts of funky functions. Can anyone think of cool things we can do with this? Well, let me give you a couple. I'll, I'll skip over this slide because I'm running out of time. So here's an example of what you can do. And I'm actually guilty of this. I ran a, I currently am running a website where it says copyright, you know, 2014. I'm like, oh, God, okay. What year is it? 2017? Yeah, okay. So what this will do, this says anything that comes back, look for my stupidity that I did. Actually, I did this last year. Uh, for copyright 2013, replace it with copyright 2016, and off it goes. In fact, you can call a function that knows what date it is and puts in the correct year. Because there's nothing more embarrassing than, you know, it's like, hey, look at my website. It's on GeoCities. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like flying toasters and nonsense. Right? So we can overwrite this stuff so we don't look like complete buffoons. So that's a very simple example of what you can do. Here's, here's another example. This is real. This is actually taken from a major airline. And when you log into their frequent flyer system, they do a lookup on some AD system or whatever they do, and it returns what class you are. If you're like me and you're bronze plebeian, guess what? You go to the poop servers. You go to the overloaded servers that are really slow. If you're platinum, you go to a completely different pool of servers. We actually change your pool login. You get actually a better class of service <laughs> because well, you fly a lot. This is real. This is actually live in an unnamed North American. It sounds a lot like American. But uh, <laughs> it starts with an A, rhymes with American. Anyway, <laughs> can't tell you who it is. Plausible deniability. Uh, here's another one. Imagine this. Now, why am I running a web server? To serve web pages? Yeah, 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 yeah. But most of my content is static, isn't it? Yeah, okay, yeah. Well, why can't I just use an S3 bucket for that? I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing anything server-side. I'm just serving static content. It's like a CDN. So guess what? Why don't we just point the guy at an S3 bucket? But you get this really nasty URL. That looks really silly. Well, why don't we rewrite that URL? So when the customer comes to my host, I'm going to rewrite that as being here and shoot it into Amazon, and it's going to go grab the index.html and all that static content and serve it out of an S3 bucket. And on the way out, I'm going to rewrite where it came from to appear to be my cool website. Guess what? I just saved a whole bunch of money because <laughs> I'm not spinning up web servers now. What's that? By comparison, how much does it cost you to run the architecture? That's a great question. We're talking about, oh, 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 sorry, in terms of running compute yeah. versus storage? Yeah, yeah you'd, have, you'd have to figure that out yourself, how much. Are, oh, no, no, you know, that, that, that's a great question. Anything is, is good. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, that's actually up to you. So if you have a content-heavy system that really is just pushing content, this is known as serverless architecture. There is no server behind this. You will run into problems. Though, if you do have dynamic content, sorry, I guess to answer your question is, it's up to you to figure out how much your compute resources are doing versus how much can I just stick it in an S3 bucket and serve it that way, right? However, you're gonna run into problems, aren't you? Because you, <laughs> S3 buckets have no API. You can't do anything with an S3 bucket. You can just push content back to the user. So what I wanna do is I wanna set up a website that is 99% static content, but if he clicks on the thing that says blog, comes in with blog, I'm actually going to redirect him to WordPress, but he's not going to know that, and he's going to go hit my blog. So Amazon will literally go off, we're going to, our VADC will go off, pull this out of WordPress, rewrite all the headers, and present it back to the user as if he never went to WordPress. Pretty cool. So I can have dynamic content, static content. I can host my dynamic stuff over on WordPress. I can host my 
uh, static content out of S3 buckets. By the way, how much does WordPress cost? Nothing. cheap. <laughs> and obviously, on the way back, if it came from WordPress, I rewrite it to my cool URL slash blog and replace all the headers. And the user is literally none the wiser. It's our stuff that's going to do that. There is, um, what was it? There's a, there's a whole API marketplace coming out now where, you know, if you need a Maps API or you need something, you know, geolocation API or you need, I don't know, whatever you need, there's a whole API thing, um, much like a DNF would be in, in Marketplace. So look for that because you can use Traffic Script to call those APIs to do a whole bunch of work for you. Like, don't, don't write it yourself. People have already wrote it. You can subscribe to it. All right, quick, quick summary. Am I doing okay on time? Yep, all good. Yeah. All right. Uh, good question on the, we have licensing models that you can just buy it once and away you go. Five minutes? Perfect. All right, we're right on time. You can get a subscription. There's a service provider license. We've got bulk licensing, et cetera. This is the hard sell here. I'm an engineer. I don't really know many of the numbers. What we also allow is a developer version. Every feature is on. You can do anything you want. VWAF, rewrites, caching, HTTP2, redirects, whatever you like. It's limited to one megabit. But for playing around, that's actually pretty, pretty good. You can cluster these things and everything. So when you actually do that CFT template, you'll actually get a pair of these guys at one megabit. Good enough for trying. I had, we also have a 30 day evaluation. You can contact me or any of my compatriots here. We can give you a full license at like line rate, you know, go 10 gig, go. And if you're running, just email me again. I'll spin you another one. So, uh, and then this is on the last slide. Obviously, this is going to get sent out to you guys. We have a lot of information, obviously, on our website. My marketing people, who are the lovely and talented Monica, is over here from our marketing department. They spend a lot of time making sure we get a lot of glossies and a lot of information on how to do this stuff. Likewise, you can always contact me. Got questions? Shoot me an email. You're all going to have my email now. And I'm more than happy to give you a hand about what we can do with this thing and how we can do it. Anyways, in summary, we're right on time. This is perfect. Uh, the VADC can help. The air traffic manager can do pretty much everything an ELB can do. Well, not do everything an ELB can do, plus tons more. So you can use us in addition behind an ELB. You can replace us with the ELB or ELB ALB combination. We also support more protocols. I didn't have time to talk about it, but it's also not just HTTP. That sounded not good. expensive. <laughs> Uh, we can also do SMTP, we can do POP3, IMAP, IMAP, S, all that kind of stuff, S is a law float. So it's not just these protocols. Uh, we can scale out your ELB. I had some pricing stuff. I didn't necessarily want to do that in here in a hard sell, but we did a pricing comparison where somebody had about uh, 12 or 15 ELBs because it was pretty, pretty big and they had multiple customers, and we replaced them all with our stuff, and it was a massive cost savings. So it is compelling. I mean, if you're all, if you're, all you're going to do is just do simple load, load, simple load balancing, ELB works fine. If you're going to get into scale, if you're going to get into doing some tricky stuff that's going to get you out of jail for free, kind of idea, well, maybe not that free, but this, <laughs> everything costs really cost something. <laughs> uh, some uh, unexpected application problems with traffic script. But as I said, you know, like, you know, somebody comes in with mobile, you make a redirect from mobile, somebody comes in with Windows XP, you can actually give them a page that says, why are you using XP? <laughs> And obviously, the CloudFormation template, which you now have the URL, absolutely free to try. Go check it out. Have a look. Give us a buzz. More than happy to help you out through this. Anyways, my name is Chris. Thanks very much. Anybody got questions? So we got a couple of minutes here. So I, I may not have any answers. Uh, of course, you have all the answers. Anybody got any questions? Or yeah. yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, you can use Nginx on the back end. Um, because all we're doing is we're just proxying the whole thing. So it doesn't have to be Apache. Yeah, it has to be you know, anything that you want to run in the back end, we can work with. So up to you. Like, again, we're, we're, we're pretty agnostic about any kind of like what you're actually doing in the back end because we're just, we're just doing all the work at layer seven, so to speak, right? More questions? Anyone using 
Throwhead out there? No. Uh, no. no. Thinking about us? Looking at us? You're looking at it now. You can see use first? Yes. We got a lot of switches, yeah. We also make tin and routers. Anyone, you have any services with Focus? It's all our stuff. You, you ever heard of Facebook? <laughs> no, no, never heard of it. A lot of our stuff. Anyway, awesome, Chris. Thank you very much for that. Thanks, Cyril. That was awesome. Uh, again, on the team. So, guys, at the back, I don't know if you've got a ticket and stuff, but if you come fill out one of the tickets, put it into the box over here to win the drone at the end. Um, very cool. So Chris, thank you very much for that. Very good. So we're going to have a break now for some beer and networking. And then we're going to come back with Chef just after the uh, break. Cool. Thanks, everyone.